So projections. Um, <clears throat> let's look at this example. So somebody asked me the following. It's like a three-part question. Um, the first part was find a vector in the same direction as the vector negative two, four, two with a length of six. Okay, so basically the idea is if you want to find the vector in the same direction as any given vector, we're going to find the unit vector in that direction. So we're going to divide the vector by its vector. So let's give this vector a name. I'm going to call it A. Then the magnitude of A is the square root of negative two squared plus four squared plus two squared. That's going to be the square root of 24. Um, you could simplify this to two root six. I don't think you really need to. Okay. So here's what I would, I think the easiest way to do this question is the following. First, I have another one here. First, I'm just going to take this vector and divide it by its magnitude. So A divided by the magnitude of A, that's a vector in the same direction as A with a length of one, right? It's a unit vector. So that's going to be, and I would probably do it like this. I would just say one over root 24 times negative two, four, two. So there's a vector in the same direction of length one. If I wanted to have length six, you multiply it by six. So then here's the vector we actually want. I'm going to call it B. The vector B is six times the vector in the same direction as a unit vector, which is going to be six over the square root of 24 times the vector negative two, four, two. So basically, if you want something to be in the same direction as another vector, it's just going to be a multiple of that vector. In this case, we both. So I mean, I could have the no, I think that was enough. I was just say you could have found the length of this and just multiplied it by the appropriate number to find the length, which I guess is what we did, right? We found the length of this and then we multiplied by six over the length of it. So we divided by its length to make the length one, and then we multiplied by six to make the length six. Seems a little convoluted, but it's probably the easiest way. And then you can simplify this, right? Six over root 24 is six over two root six, which you could write as root six over two. You could do that. And then you could, you could even factor out the two if you wanted to, right? So the very simplified answer would probably be root six times the vector negative one, two, one. Right, because if you factor out the two from this, which you can, because each of these have a factor of two, you can cancel the two there. So this would probably be the best, nicest way of writing the answer. Um, I don't think you need to distribute the root six to each of those terms, but you can, right? So right, remember with the scalar multiple of a vector, you just multiply the scale the scalar multiple by each term of the vector. Also true for matrices, right? If, not that we're there yet. If you multiply a matrix by a scalar, you multiply each entry in the matrix by that same scalar. A lot of things about scalars and vectors work the same way, which is nice. Um, okay, let's do the next part of this question, which was now instead of finding a vector with the same direction and the length of six, I want the vector with the same length in a different direction. Well, that's probably even easier. So now they say same length. And I think they, I feel like they made this next one too easy personally. They said same length. Now they want the direction to be one, zero, zero. Okay, well, the reason I feel like this is almost too easy is because the direction vector they're giving you has a vector, has a length of one. Oh, I see. Interesting. Okay. Well, you guys are like, why is James? Okay. The next question is more interesting. So let's do this one. It's super duper easy. We know the length was the square root of 24. So we're just going to take this direction vector, which does have a length of one, and we're going to multiply it by, let's, uh, let's say our answer here is V. Our answer is the square root of 24 times one, zero. Um, 
it's not particularly interesting, but it is worthwhile to note that if you're trying to, yeah, let me actually just, let me do the next question and then we'll see what I mean. So here's the next question. I guess this is why they phrased the next question this way. So here's how I would phrase the next question. I want a vector with the same length as, this, as the original one, as negative two, four, two, which we know has this, a length of square root of 24. And if I was gonna write this question, I would say the following way, which is probably wrong. I would probably say in the same direction as one, two, three. I would say in the same direction as because I always think of a vector as just having a direction. But this is not a direction vector because it's not a unit vector. So the way they write it, which is probably technically better, is to say same length as this and parallel to. But here's the thing. Parallel vectors are in the same direction. So what they're really trying to do is say, OK, I want to have a length. I want the length to equal the square root of 24. And I want the direction to be this direction. Well, here's the problem. If I just multiply the square root of 24 times this, the length won't be the square root of 24, right? This vector has its own length. And when you multiply a vector by a scalar, you multiply its length by that scalar. So if this length isn't 1, then this times this vector won't have a length of square root of 24, right? If you take, if you take this square root of 24, times the vector one, two, three. If I say this is my vector, let's call it W for wrong. The magnitude of W is not what I want. The magnitude of W is not equal to the square root of 24. It's the square root of 24 times whatever the magnitude of this is. So what do we need to do first? We actually need to find, we want our vector to be parallel to this vector here. We need it to be in the same direction as, as the direction vector. So we find, but to find the direction vector, words are feel like they're impossible today. We have to find the direction vector, meaning we have to find the vector that has a length of one in the same direction, meaning divide by the magnitude of this vector. So here is our actual unit vector in the same direction. It's going to be the vector one, two, three, divided by the magnitude of that vector. What's the magnitude of this vector? Um, it's the square root of one plus four plus nine. Okay, so that's going to be, that's, I mean, that's kind of it. So then the vector we actually want is going to be this vector times the length that we want that, right? Because this vector here has a length of one. So our actual answer is going to be the length of square root of 24 divided by the square root of 14 times one, two, three. So, if you want a vector of a certain length in a certain direction, you first have to take your direction vector as a unit vector, so having a length of one, and then multiply it by the correct length to get the result you want. Okay. This wasn't, I mean, I feel like this is kind of related to projections, but oh yeah, I mean, sure. No, yeah, it's not really. Okay, let's talk about projections for just a minute. So let's say I want to find, let's say, where'd you go, example here? Let's say, oh, that's not an example I want to do. Sure, let me just make some stuff up. Let's say A is the vector, mm, let's go two dimensions so I can draw some things. Let's say A is the vector three comma one, and B is the vector, I don't know, two comma five. And I want to find the projection of A onto B. Okay. And I also want to find the component of A onto B. The component part is just the length, right? How much of A is in the direction of B? Okay. These things aren't hard to find. But I find it really helpful to draw a picture. Right? You could totally memorize these formulas. I don't know if I would. Um, so let's see. So A is 3, 1. Oh, yeah. 
and b is two five two five. So here's b. Here's a. And the interesting thing here, I'm going to make. Sorry. I might have. I might have made. I'm going to. I'm going to change a. Just no. I don't want to change a. Fine. So when you draw the projection here, it might be a little unclear, right? Like if this actually did I draw? Did I did I make a did I make a triangle that's actually a ninety degree triangle? Let's see here. This no, that's not right. Um. Okay. Uh, let's see here. So sorry. What I'm trying to say is that if your vector isn't quite long enough for you to drop a perpendicular onto it. Just extend it, right? I don't care if it actually is landing on the vector or not. I just want to know how much of the vector B is in the direction of A. So I'm saying, okay, well, it's that much. Um, I'm sorry, I really have to use the bathroom. Like, I went to the bathroom right before class started. I really have to. So here's what I want you guys to do while I work on this. I want you to. So there's your angle theta. We know that cosine theta is equal to, let's call the projection, let's call it V. So we don't have to write this whole mess. Cosine theta should equal the adjacent over the hypotenuse. That's going to be the magnitude of V over the magnitude of V. Okay, multiply both sides. by the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B. Let's see what you get on the left. I'll be right back, I'm sorry. Sorry about that. Okay, so what we're trying to get to here is that when you multiply both sides by this, you're going to get the dot product on the left hand side. So I'm going to get that the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times cosine theta, which is exactly A dotted with B. That's going to equal, well, here on this side, the magnitude of B is cancel out. So you just get the magnitude of V 
times the magnitude of A. Then if we want to find the magnitude of the projection, we're going to divide both sides by the magnitude of A. So, sure. The magnitude of V, which is what the component of A onto V is equal to, is equal to the dot product divided by the magnitude of A. So that's how you figure out how long the projection is. Really, no, that's, I mean, I would say this, there might be a better way. This is probably the best way because you, you don't usually know this angle. So in this case, that's going to equal A dotted with B. So that's three times two plus one times five divided by the magnitude of A, which is the square root of nine plus one, which is the square root of 10. So the magnitude of the component here is going to be 6 plus 5 over the square root of 10, or 11 over the square root of 10, which is a little bit bigger than a is, right? 10 divided by the square root of 10 would be the square root of 10. So 11 divided by the square root of 10 is slightly bigger. OK. How do we find the projection itself? So the projection itself, well, we just kind of did that in the previous problem, right? If you want to find a vector in a certain direction with a certain length, you take the vector, you take the length you want, the component we just calculated, and you multiply it by the direction you want, but the unit vector in that direction. So to get the actual vector v here, to get the vector v, we're going to take the magnitude of v, which we just calculated, and we're going to multiply it by the direction it's in, which is a divided by its own magnitude. So that's it. So this becomes, I like to think of this as a dot b over the magnitude of a times the magnitude of a again, or a dot a. And no, I'll, I will mention here my notation, right? That looks like a dot product. It's not. It's the magnitude of v times the vector a divided by the magnitude of a. And not a dot product. These are dot products, a dot b over a dot a times a. So that's getting the dean. Let's see, a dot b again is 11. a dot a is 10, right? a is the vector 3, 1, so a dot a is 10 times a. So that is the projection of b onto a. It's a little bit longer than a itself, right? It's 11 tenths times the vector a. So it's a little bit longer than a, but it's still in the same direction. So yeah, I don't know how, the, like I'm trying to think like how important really is this? It's a little important. The other thing we could ask is what's this vector here, which is I believe the notation is the orthogonal projection. Some people call this the orth of b onto a. So to find this, you have to find this first. So to find the orthogonal projection of B onto A, we know that A, sorry, we know that the projection plus the orthogonal component is equal to B. So the thing that's always true is that B, or whatever your vector is called, is always equal to the projection of itself onto another vector plus the orthogonal complement of itself onto another vector. That's always true. So if you know this and you know this, you can find that. So the orthogonal projection of B onto A is equal to the vector B itself minus the projection. Which in this case is the vector 2, 5, that's the vector b, minus this vector here, which I'm going to distribute the 11 tenths. So I'm going to say that's 33 tenths, comma, 1 tenth. Oh, sorry, 11 tenths. We can calculate this if we want to, right? A 2 minus 33 tenths is 22 tenths minus 33 tenths, which is negative 11 tenths. 
and five, which is 50 tenths minus 11 tenths is going to be 39 tenths. So this vector here is going back 11 tenths and up 39 tenths, which seems like it looks right. Um, I don't feel like there's a whole lot to say with projections. You're really just feel like you're, it's always just a right triangle, right? You've got a vector. I, I guess one other thing I could say, but before I say that, and you've got a vector on another vector, and you're just kind of saying, okay, if I drop that vector down onto the line here, what kind of thing do I get? Um, I will point out just one or two things. Your vectors don't have to be going in the same direction, meaning, or similar directions. I like if this is your vector A and this is your vector B, then the projection of B onto A. So you have to kind of just extend the vector A and then drop B perpendicularly onto A. So then, whoops, okay, that's fine. That vector there. That is your projection of B onto A. On the other hand, yeah, I was going to, yeah. So, I mean, what that what that's going to mean is you're going to get a vector that's kind of the opposite direction of A. That's fine. Um, yeah, okay, that depends a little bit. All right. So I I think I'm going to keep trying to convince myself. I think that's enough about projections. If you have more questions about them, we can definitely talk about them another time. But I feel like it's worthwhile to start talking about matrices. Um, I mean, you guys, some people ask us like 3D graphing and stuff. Yeah. Let me um, let me see here for a second. You have test this Friday. They're like, yeah, okay, that's this is really soon since we didn't just have one on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Okay, well. Yes, okay, so I'll try to come up with something for Wednesday, like a practice test. It seems, I mean, there's a lot, there's obviously not a lot to cover, but we can definitely do practice. And I will try to make sure to include some 3D stuff so that we can practice that. Because I mean, right, the test she said was just chapter eight stuff, right? Like 8.1 to 8.4, I believe that's what she said. Anyway, I will try to come up with some good stuff so that we can do another practice just like we did last Monday. <laughs> I feel like these two tests are maybe a little too close to each other, but oh well, that's life. I guess, I guess, you know what, I take it back. I understand why they're so close, because she wanted the chapter eight stuff to just be its own test, and there's not a lot of chapter eight material, so I kind of get why she would do it that way. Okay, let's talk about matrices. Matrices. Just like vectors, matrices can only be added or subtracted together if they're the same size, right? So for example, these vectors, you have the vector A equal to three, one, two, and the vector B equal to two, zero. You couldn't add these together. I mean, that's not 100% entirely true because you could say, well, really this is the vector two, zero, zero. But if you're really kind of specifically saying this vector represents something with three dimensions and this represents something with two dimensions, and maybe they mean totally different things, right? Maybe they're like the qualitative dimensions that mean like color or shape or size or whatever. You can't have these together. There's not the same number of things to add together. They're not in the same spots. Same sort of way, matrices have to have the same size. And there are two things that make up a matrix size the number of rows and the number of dimensions. That's uh, the number, number of columns, number of dimensions. Good God. I'm sorry. Where'd you go? Cool. So let's look at some examples. So these are not, I mean, so actually, I should point out this is a matrix. This is a one by three matrix. It is a matrix with one row and three columns. This is also a matrix. It's a one by two matrix. It's a matrix with one row and two columns. Although when you're writing it as a matrix, you definitely do not write the commas. We often still refer to a one. So a matrix like that that I just erased, like a row matrix where there's one row, 
is often called a row matrix. It's also often called a vector because they're essentially the same thing. But let's talk about some non-row or column vectors like the following. Let's say it is the two by two matrix, two, one, negative three, five. B is also a two by two matrix, four, zero, one, three. And C is a two by three matrix, six, one, two. So I should say, when I read a matrix, I usually read it row by row. So this matrix, I, I would read off as the matrix six, one, two, negative one, zero, one, right? Row by row from top to bottom. Um, yeah. And you don't have to, but you can write that this is a two by two, this is a two by two, this is a two by three. There are two rows, there are one, two, three columns. Two rows, two columns, two rows, two columns. Okay, let's talk about adding some things together. So you can only add matrices together if they have the exact same size, or also subtract, right? So I can do like maybe A plus two times B. That's a valid calculation. Um, let's see what it is. So A, that's the matrix. 2, 1, negative 3, 5. And 2 times B is going to be 2 times each of these entries. So it's going to be 2 times 4, 0, 1, 3. So let's see. And just like Carano was saying in class, multiplying, adding, subtracting entries together isn't really hard. It's just a challenge to keep track of all the right things in the right places. Um, there are definitely lots of places online you can do matrix multiplication. Like if you Google matrix multiplication, you can enter things into a matrix and multiply them together and it'll do it really easily. That doesn't mean you shouldn't know how to do it, especially since for almost all of you in 17C, the only matrices we're really gonna deal with are two by two matrices. So you don't, you don't need really powerful tools to deal with that, but you should be aware there are tools that allow you to multiply really big matrices together. Um, but this one's gonna be Q1 negative five plus Distributing the two, right, doing the scalar multiplication, it's going to be eight, zero, two, six. And then we add them together, and we get two plus eight is 10, one plus zero is one, negative three plus two is negative one, and five plus six is 11. Right? To add matrices together, you just add the entries in the corresponding components. Same thing with, the same thing with subtraction. All right, if I wanted to do three A minus B, I would do three times two one negative three five minus B, which is four zero one three. So I feel like we can do this all at once. Three times two is six, six minus four is two. 3 times 1 is 3, 3 minus 0 is 3. 3 times negative 3 is negative 9, negative 9 minus 1 is negative 10, and 3 times 5 is 15, 15 minus 3 is 12. But we could not do A plus C. Right? A plus C, not defined. C plus A, also undefined. C plus B, also undefined. Um, I should say matrix addition, just like regular addition, works the same in, in any order. So it is definitely true that A plus B is equal to B plus A. I don't want to calculate them, but I think you guys can see that. Um, and just like subtraction, right? Subtraction is not the same either way. In fact, subtraction, if you do A minus B, it's equal to the opposite of B minus A, which again makes sense, right? Because that's just negative B plus A, which is A minus B. So addition, subtraction, of matrices works as usual. The thing that I think people find challenging with matrix operations is matrix multiplication. Um, I suppose a tiny bit of, oh, I should, no, I should hurry it up and what I should do. A tiny bit of notation. Um, sometimes people are going to write matrices as, nah, 
So I should I, like if I was writing this as the matrix a one one a one two a two one a two two right the a one one entry is two the first row second entry is one the second row first entry is negative three we can do the same sort of notation here right we can say this is c11 c12 c13 and the second row is c21 c22 c23 we use lowercase letters in the matrix we use a capital letter in the for the name of the matrix. Um, what else do I want to say here? Matrix multiplication. Yeah. So let's multiply some matrices. Let's do, I, I wrote these on here and I'm like, keep going to the second floor. So let's do A times B. A times B. Um, usually we don't write, and usually we just write, like there's no multiplication, so we would just write A, B, and we mean A times B. And that's going to be the matrix 2, 1, and negative 3, 5 times 4, 0, 1, 3. And the way you can tell if you can multiply two matrices together or not is if the inner dimensions match. So A is a 2 by 2, B is also a 2 by 2. The inner dimensions match. The number of columns of A is equal to the number of rows of B. How do you multiply them together using the dot product? So to get the result, I don't think you should write it out. Meaning we could, but I really don't think you need to write out two times four plus one times one, and then two times zero plus one times three. I think you, you should, you want to practice this enough so that you can kind of do it. So I know for the first row, first column entry, I'm doing the first row of A dotted with the first column of B. So if you know what row and column you're using, you know where you are in the product matrix. First row of A dotted with the first column of B gives you the first row, first column entry of your result. Two times four plus one times one is nine. Typically, I keep using the same first row of the first matrix until I've exhausted all the columns of the second matrix. So first row, first column, first row dotted with the second column. Two times zero plus one times three is three. I've exhausted all of the columns of B, so now I'm gonna move down to the second row of A. Negative three times four plus five times one is negative 12 plus five, which is negative seven. Second row of A, first column of B gives you the two, one entry, the second row, first column entry of your product. And then second row of A, second column of B, negative three times zero plus five times three is 15. Great. I want everybody to take a minute and calculate B times A. So on your own, counting down already, find this. All right, it's probably been close enough to a minute. Let's check it out. So first row dotted with the first column. So I should point out when you're doing matrix multiplication, it's always rows of the first matrix dotted with columns of the second matrix. So this dotted with that is gonna give me eight. This dotted with this is gonna give me four. I did like what she was doing, how she was like crossing out the rows and columns we're using. I'm more trying to focus on the columns I am using or as columns. So like, I'm like, this row, this column, this row, this column, and then this row, this column. So one times two plus three times negative three is negative seven. And this row of this column is one times one plus three times five, which is one plus 15. 
Okay, there's a really, really, really important thing to know about matrix multiplication. Order matters. If you multiply two matrices in the opposite order, well, first of all, for it to even work, they have to both be square matrices, meaning the same number of rows and columns. If you multiply two square matrices together, multiplying them one way usually means you get something different than multiplying them the other way. So this is kind of a different thing, right? Usually when you multiply two numbers together, it doesn't matter what order you pick. Three times five is the same as five times three. When you multiply matrices together, order really, really matters. So this times this is not the same as this times this. True thing, very important. Comes up somewhat frequently. Um, but let's move on. Okay, we got eight minutes. So I should also point out, right? So here's what I'll say. You should definitely practice matrix multiplication, right? Like it's just something you're going to need to get kind of good at doing relatively quickly. Um, let's do a couple more. I can show you all you want, but I think you know that you have to practice it to get good at it. So let's do A times C. So A times C, that's A, which is two one A to five times C, which is six one two A one zero one. First of all, can I even do this? Yes, because the rows of A have the same length as the columns of C, right? You need the row that you got with the column to both have the same number of entries. Which seems backwards because we're like, because we're always talking about how we need the number of, uh, sorry, right? This is the number of rows. This is the number of columns. Same deal here, number of rows, number of columns. So to be able to multiply two matrices together, the number of columns in the first matrix have to equal the number of rows in the second matrix. But the reason that's true is because the number of columns in the first matrix is the length of the row in the first matrix, right? There's two columns, the row has two entries. And the number of rows in the second matrix is the length of the column. So there are two rows in this matrix, each column has two entries. So when I'm looking at this, I'm really, I mean, you can certainly, you can look at the dimensions and be like, oh yeah, the inner ones match, we can do it. But really I'm thinking like, if I try dotting this row with this column, is it gonna work? Are the number of things here gonna match up? And yeah, they do. So the other nice thing about seeing this is that if the inner dimensions match, the outer dimensions are what the resulting matrix has. So this, this matrix multiplication is gonna give me a two by three matrix at the end. So I'm gonna get, let's see. 2 times 6 plus 1 times negative 1 is 12 minus 1. And then this one with this one, 2 times 1 plus 1 times 0. And then this one with this one, 2 times 2 plus 1 times 1 is 5. This is make use a different color. And then this one with this one, negative 3 times 6 plus 5 times negative 1 is negative 23. And then this one with this one, negative 3 times 1 plus 0. And then this one with this one. Negative three times two is negative six plus five is negative one. There's my resulting matrix. And then of course, hopefully you guys can all see or agree with me that C times A, no dice. All right, if you try to do that one, times that one, you can see that when we start trying to dot the rows of this with the columns of this, you can't do the dot product of a thing with three entries with a thing with two entries. So this one is undefined. You cannot multiply these matrices together where you have a two by three and a two by two. The inner dimensions don't match, so we are out of luck. Okay. Um, a couple other things that will probably come up soon. Um, I have one for you guys current homework assignment. I guess I probably should. 
So another notation that you didn't quite get to do, but I'm sure is going to be soon, is the transpose of a matrix. So for the same matrices we've got, let's have a race now. So if A is the matrix, where'd you go? Yeah. 2, 1, negative 3, 5, then A transpose, which is just written as A with a superscript capital T, is I always think of it as the rows become columns and the columns become rows. So the first row is now going to be the first column. The second row, sorry, the first column is now going to be the first row. And the second column is now going to be the second row. Columns become rows, rows become columns. Um, and you can do it for any size matrix. So if you take like C, which was the matrix, where'd you go? 6, 1, 2, negative 1, 0, 1. C transpose, rows become columns, columns become rows. So my first row, 6, 1, 2, becomes the first column, 6, 1, 2. And the second row, negative 1, 0, 1, becomes the second column. Oh, come on, that's a zero. Or you could say, the first column became the first row, the second column became the second row, the third column became the third row. Either way you want to think of it. Interestingly, you can always multiply a matrix by its transpose. So if you want to say like, what is C times C transpose, it's definitely going to work because the inner dimensions will always match. If C is two by three and C transpose is three by two, you can totally multiply them together and get a two by two matrix. So there we would get, let's see. Huh. Yeah, I guess I should write it out. That's kind of interesting. Um, so if we multiply these together, we get first row dotted with the first column. So six times six plus one times one plus two times two. So that's six squared plus one squared plus two squared, which is going to be 41. And then six times negative one plus one times zero plus two times one is negative six plus two. And then the same thing down here, actually. Negative one times six, zero times one, and one times two is also going to be negative four. And then negative one times negative one, zero times zero, one times one gives you one plus zero plus one. Cool. This, by the way, is called a symmetric matrix. When the off diagonal elements, sorry, I should actually let me back up. So if you have a square matrix, the entries that have like the same, they're in the same row and same column. So this entry is in the first row, first column. This entry is in the second row, second column. Those are called diagonal elements. And if a matrix has all the off diagonal elements kind of like matching each other up, it's called symmetric. We'll talk more.